When you're done with a song, you're gonna want to export it, to send it to your friends or upload it somewhere. First, we need to select what to export. If you've got pattern mode selected up here, you will export the currently selected pattern and only that. Let's set it to song. This will export the whole thing from start to finish. That is, unless you've made a song selection on the timeline. If you've made a selection here, you will export that portion only. Let's hit Ctrl D to remove it, because we want a full song. Now it's export time. You find it by going through File and then Export. Or by using Ctrl R. Now you'll be asked where to save your file, and what to name it. And in the next step we'll reach the export menu. Here there are some things to think about. Let's take a look at the tail settings. This is where you tell FL Studio what to do with the end of your song. Cut Remainder cuts off the audio immediately after the last note. Leave Remainder, this keeps things like reverb tails in the export. And Wrap Remainder. This is a specific setting for exporting loops. It moves the tail to the beginning of the file, making it seamless. For most cases, Leave Remainder is fine. Here you choose the file format. WAV and MP3 are the most common. WAV has a larger file size, but the highest quality. While MP3 is a smaller file, but can still sound very good. You can also export to several different file formats at once. Pause here to read about the rest of them. For MP3 files, you can check the bitrate here. Everything about 224 will normally sound very good. Going below that will give you a smaller file, but it might not sound that great. For WAV files, you can change the bit depth. 16-bit is great for music, and you really can't go wrong with that. If you plan to use your audio again in future productions, pick 32-bit float. 24-bit is mainly for compatibility with older software that does not support 32-bit float. Here we have the resampling settings. This affects the quality and apply to all file formats. Normally, it's pretty hard to distinguish between these higher quality options. You can keep it at the absolute highest, but it slows down the render time. We recommend that you put it on at least 64 for your final render. Below the resampling options, we have more quality settings. These are recommended settings for most cases. You can pause if you want to read more about this. Down here we have the miscellaneous tab. Let me just minimize the other tabs here. These four to the left don't affect sound. They only affect the metadata of your track such as preserving the tempo, so that the next time you drag it into FL Studio, it will remember it. To the right we have settings that do affect the sound. Split mixer tracks. Most of the time you want to keep this off. It exports every mixer insert separately. For example, if we activate this setting on this song that only has bass and a kick, the export will give us those two inserts separately. This is useful if you want to collaborate with someone who doesn't use FL Studio, because they'll have all the different parts of your track as separate audio files. Trim PDC Silence. This only applies to WAV files. FL Studio adds a tiny amount of silence at the start of a WAV file to keep it all synced. If you trim the PDC Silence, you remove that silence from the final export. So most of the times you want to keep this on. Enable inserts and master effects. If you've got effects added to an insert or on the master channel, you probably want to keep this enabled. But they're useful if you want to export an unmixed or unmastered version of your track. Together with the export, you can also upload it directly to SoundCloud. Now press start, and FL Studio will render out your file. When it's done, it plays this lovely sound. And that's it, good luck!